This is the Physical Science Section 14.2 lesson video. And as always, if you want an easy way to get all my videos in one spot, just subscribe to my channel. So, in 14.2, we're going to talk about work and how machines help us do work. So, a machine is a device that changes a force. Machines can make work easier to do. They can change the size of the force needed, the direction of the force, or the distance over which the force acts. So, sometimes we can apply less force and that's what makes them work easier. Sometimes changing the direction, like sometimes instead of picking something up, being able to pull down to lift it, like using a pulley, that might be easier because then we can use our body weight to help us pull down. So changing direction sometimes helps, or the distance over which a force acts. Sometimes we might want to shorten the distance, but sometimes we might want to make the distance longer because it'll make it a little bit easier. Think of a ramp, instead of having a super, um, steep ramp, if we make it a little bit uh, less steep, it's going to be a longer ramp. So we might have more distance to go over, but it's not quite as steep, so it makes it a little easier. So let's talk about how these things relate to each other. So we're going to talk about lots of input-output things over the next few slides. So each complete rotation of a car jack handle applies a small force over a large distance. A small force over a large distance becomes a large force over a small distance. If a machine increases the distance over which you exert the force, then it decreases the amount of force you exert. So think about a car jack. Okay, like this is one like my dad has in our garage at home. Well, I mean, I don't live there anymore, obviously, but um, my dad used to have one of these. So what you do is you have this big pole that comes up, and so you do these big, like a large distance of going up and down. But the car jack on the other side, as you're going up, down, up, down, it's literally coming up like this, just itty bitty bits at a time. So what's happening is we are applying a large distance with a low force. Even I can sit there and use that car jack. I am clearly not very strong. So we're applying a large distance with a tiny force, but that car jack on the other hand is lifting an entire car, which I clearly couldn't do on my own. It's applying a huge force, but over a tiny distance. That's why every time I'm going up and down, up and down, a lot of feet in span, it's literally only coming up maybe an inch, maybe a centimeter at a time. Okay, so you've got to realize that your force and your distance are going to be opposites. If you have a high force, it's going to be a short distance. If you have a high distance, it's going to be low force, like that. So let's talk about, like I said, all this input-output thing. We'll look at another example first, though, and that's rowing a boat. All right, so when you pull an oar a small distance, if you look, when you row, you're only going about this much. That's about all you're doing. Um, the other end of the oar moves a large distance through the water. So like if you look, this guy, he's only moving his arms about this much. But if you watch the oar, it's coming this much. So he is using a small distance and getting a large distance out of those oars. A machine that decreases the distance through which you exert force increases the amount of force required. So since he is only doing a small distance, he's having to do a harder force, a higher force. Whereas the oar on the other side is doing a large distance, so it is exerting a smaller force. So remember, force and distance, they're going to be opposites. So let's talk about this changing direction. So I said a pulley in my example. Pulling on, um, pulling, oh, that probably should say one. Oh well, there was a typo. Alright, pulling one end of an oar causes the other end of the oar to move in the opposite direction. Another thing that changes direction is a pulley. Like I said, maybe instead of lifting something, it'd be easier if you had it set up to a pulley. So I could pull down and use my body weight to lift it up. So changing direction also sometimes can help make our work easier. Alright, so here's going to be all the input-output stuff I was warning you about. So because of friction, the work done by a machine is always less than the work done on the machine. So in other words, what that means is you're always going to put in more work than you get out of a machine. Okay, and that's because of friction. It's going to have to overcome friction. So part of that work is going to be done to overcome that friction. The force you exert on a machine is called the input force. Anything you do on a machine is input. So the force you exert is the input force. The distance that we put our input force in is input distance. Okay, so we do the input force over an input distance. So think about the car jack. My input force is how much force I'm having to apply. My input distance would be this right here, my going up and down. That would be my input distance. The work done by the input force acting through the input distance is called work input. 
So in other words, remember, work is just force times distance. So if we do our input force times our input distance, that's how much work I put in on the car jack. For me doing like this, my force times my distance, that's how much work I put in. So what does the machine do? Because what's the point of having a machine if it's not going to do anything? So the force that's exerted by the machine is called the output force. And the distance the output force is exerted through is called the output distance. So anything that's output is what the machine does. So in our car jack example, the force of the machine lifting the car is the output force. The distance that it rises each time I'm over here doing this, that little distance it rises is the output distance. And of course, remember, work is force times distance. So the work output is the output force times the output distance. And remember, you cannot get more work out of a machine than you put in it. You're not even going to get the same amount of work back because of friction. So, let's knock out this section assessment. So it says, how can using a machine make a task easier to perform? Well, remember, it can change the force, it can change the direction, or it can change the distance. Those are the three ways. It can change the force, it can change the direction, or it can change the distance. So number two, how does the work done on a machine compare to the work done by a machine? Remember, the work done on a machine is always higher than the work done by the machine. Okay, so the work done on the machine is larger than the work done by the machine. All right, and number three, a machine produces a larger force than you exert. How does the input distance of the machine compare to the output distance? Okay, so this is where you have to think a second. Okay, so remember, we talked about distance and force are going to be opposites. So it says the machine produces a large force. That's like the car jack. It's doing a large force, but over a tiny distance. Okay, a large force over a tiny distance. So how does the input distance compare to the output? Well, if it's only going a tiny distance, remember the car jack, I'm doing what kind of distance? A large input distance. So you say input distance is larger than output distance. And see, that's the thing, y'all, is if you'll keep an example in your mind of the simple machines, then just apply it to an example instead of trying to memorize everything. Okay, think of the car jet. I'm doing a large distance over a tiny, but a tiny force, because my little weak arms can even do a car jet. And the car jet itself is doing a large force over a tiny distance. So my input distance has to be greater than the output of the car jet. So just remember examples of these things. All right, so it says, you do 200 joules of work pulling the oars of a rowboat. What can you say about the amount of work the oars do to move the boat? Well, we don't have any other numbers we can look at, so all we can really say about this is we know it's going to be less than 200 joules. Because remember, you cannot get the same amount of work you put into a machine. It's always going to be a little less because of friction. All right, so we can say you get less than 200 joules. Number five, how can you increase the work output of a machine? Well, there's a couple of ways. You could increase the work input. If you put in more work, it will put in output more work. Um, or if you could decrease friction somehow. We'll talk about efficiency later. Um, if you can decrease friction, then that's less work it has to do to overcome the friction. So there's two ways, okay? You can increase your work input or decrease friction. And then number six, it says, when you swing a baseball bat, how does the output distance of the end of uh, the output distance the end of the bat moves compare with the distance you move your hands through. So think about if I'm holding a bat. I'm going to swing. I'm not a baseball player, so my swing will probably look terrible. So I'm going to swing. So if you look, my input distance was this right here. That's the distance I moved. But think about it, the bat, if I'm holding the bat, I wish I had something that was bat shaped and I could hold it real quick. But if I'm swinging a bat, you got to think the end of that bat is going to be like this. So the output distance of the bat is going to be larger than the input distance where my arms are moving. Okay, so it says how does the uh, output distance compare with the input distance? So the output distance of the bat will be larger than the input distance. Like I said, just think about what's happening. Think about a swing. Okay, I don't have a very large input distance. That bat, because it's much longer, like if you think, it's going to come around like this. So it's going to have much larger distance. Alright, so hopefully you understand how machine works and how that input and output um, distance, force, and work are based on each other. And always remember, you can't get as much out of a machine as you put in because of friction.